I appreciate your patience. Uh, next slide. So uh, this is just showing you where uh, we're in Colorado. I don't know if any of you have heard of it. It's, uh, so it's uh, highlighted in red. It's kind of in the middle of the United States and we're famous for our Rocky Mountains. Um, and uh, so next slide. And these are just some images. So it's um, one of, one of, we have some beautiful mountains and maybe similar to, I know there's some big mountains in Mongolia as well. So just a little yeah. back, background on me. And, I, and so, yeah, so I've been practicing in Colorado since uh, 2008 when I finished residency. Uh, initially mm -hmm. in the uh, United States military, I did my residency at Walter Reed Army Medical Center. And now I'm in a private practice in a town, town called Pueblo, Colorado. Okay. Okay, um, so laser is actually an acronym, um, it, but it, now it's considered a word in the dictionary because it's been used so commonly. But as you can see there, it stands for light amplification by simulated, stimulated emission of radiation. Mm-hmm. Okay, go ahead. Okay, next slide. Um, so this is uh, the background of what we'll outline what we'll be talking about. We'll start out talking about the uh, just the background and science of laser technology. Uh, we'll spend most of our time talking about the holmium laser um, because that's um, that's what I use and that's what you use. Um, but I will spend mm -hmm. a minute or two on a newer mm -hmm. laser called a thulium laser. Um, that's kind of some emerging technology. Uh, and then we'll talk about technique and optimization. Uh, we'll talk about safety and then complications of laser use. Yeah, <laughs> So uh, initially uh, started, uh, initially theorized by Albert Einstein in 1916. Uh, he, he came up with the theory that you could basically stimulate light to create this late to the laser technology. And nothing happened until mm -hmm. 1957 when two uh, uh, scientists named Shalo and Towns, they were actually able to recreate the device that proved Einstein's theory. And then the first uh, essentially laser device was invented in 1960. Uh, the first urologic use was in 1987 by Drettler. And uh, basically the, and then the whole immune laser, uh, which we'll talk about more was uh, first used in 1995. Okay. <laughs> Uh, Uh, so the physics. So essentially what a laser is, is it's amplified light, okay? Um, and, and not something that's found in nature. It's purely a, uh, a man-made creation. Um, it begins when an atom, uh, which is surrounded by electrons, 
absorbs energy. So there has to be an energy source. And then the laser is an intense beam of light that's generated under very specific conditions, um, which we'll talk about. Ordinary light, so from the sun or whether it's from a, a light that you have uh, just in a room, it scatters quickly. Laser mm -hmm. light is collimated, meaning it's very, it's focused. It travels in a single direction without any divergence over a long distance. Mm -hmm. Lazar <laughs> So this is uh, essentially a picture. So as I said in the earlier slide, so an atom, which is the basic element essentially is surrounded by electrons. When an atom absorbs energy, it, it results in excitation of electrons. And then in that case, the atom is no longer stable. The atom naturally wants to, it's, it's to return to a stable state, to its ground state. And so when an atom, when an atom does so, it releases energy. That energy that it releases is the photon, and that's the basic unit of light. So that's the very start of a, of a laser. So essentially, the energy, the laser results when the energy source stimulates the atom to excite the electrons. The electrons then return to the ground state as is the natural desire of the atom. And then when it does so, it emits the photon, and that's the start of the laser. Okay. <laughs> Electron хөдөлгөөд Okay, so the photon then is the is as energy. In other words, it, 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 the laser then uses that focused light as energy to do its job. In the case, most in urology, whether it's tissue destruction or what we'll talk about mostly is stone destruction. So those photons, though, wh wherever the source is, have specific wavelengths, and so they have wave-like properties of peaks and troughs, and they can be in phase. Where they're, where they're synchronized, in which case they're amplified, or at a phase where they cancel each other out. So at the precise moment when that electron drops to the ground state, which we talked about earlier, where it wants to, its natural desire to be, the atom is then, in the, in the case of a laser, the atom is bombarded by another photon of energy. And so this results in photons generated together called coherent photons, and this continuous combination of coherent photons is the stimulated emission, and that's what results in the laser. It's a yammering or slogans and what you know in 
Okay, so this talks about, um, so the wavelength is it's fairly self-explanatory. It's the distance between two points on a wave. And different wavelengths is what gives different lasers its different clinical characteristics. And so depending on the wavelength, that'll determine what it does to a particular tissue or target and what its therapeutic result will be. It'll determine the risks and hazards. Uh, healthcare lasers are what's called the mid-infrared to visible spectrum. And you can kind of see that in the, um, are you seeing this? You can't see that, no. In the middle, so it's kind of that 10 to the fifth, sort of, sort of the mid, in the middle of that picture. Um, and the, the, the important, one of the important things about this is it's non-ionizing. And so therefore you don't get any cumulative cellular damage from the laser itself. We'll talk a little bit later under complications about how the generation of heat can actually lead to cellular damage, especially with the higher powered lasers that we're using now. But the laser itself, the light, unless it actually strikes a target, doesn't cause any surrounding damage for the clinical ones in the particular wavelengths that these are. Dolgoni <laughs> And so these, so these are the three uh, key properties of lasers and the or laser light, I should say, the collimated, monochromatic, and coherent. And I'll define those in subsequent slides. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
үүссэн тэмдэглэлийн а хэмжээсүүдийг харуулж тайлбарласан байна. Окей. Окей. So collimated uh this is we talked a little bit earlier about so ordinary light whether it's from the sun or a light bulb mm -hmm. what it mean what it's mean again next what you are saying yeah okay so ordinary light scatters um but a collimated laser light because it gets calm you can see in that diagram it travels in a single direction over long distances without divergence meaning without it scattering um and because it can travel together in synchrony it results in increased intensity of the light and in therefore increased power. Okay. So collimated gitu nol kere tu ku nik cikle di opsan gerlin dah tum jo tik yang kita collimated bisnis ni dah ambil. Tapi kalau orang tu nere tanya kita kita ini ni skill tu mesti sih tu. Berting gerlin yang kita tuan macam kat ni orang tu nere ish di sini asam tu asam cikle tu rus herindek berikan pun. Jadi lazim gerlin nol kere tu ku nik cikle Ort, ort atau zat air, yang mana ni? Selain itu juga nih cikgu itu air yang cahaya itu apa itu? Tapi ni ini nak kita diri khusnya sama sama diri khusnya khusnya masih perlu pasti betul. So coherence, this is the definite meaning of meaning the photons, which are those remember that original single unit of of the of light. Uh, they move together in time and space. And this allows the beam of light to be emitted with very little loss of energy in time and space. And so you can see in the diagram, it shows a typical light bulb, it scatters and it goes all over the place. It's different way, they're, they're made up of different wavelengths. So they're not together. A laser light, the wavelengths, you can see they're traveling together. So it's what's called coherent light. And that's what allows the light to be focused. Mm-hmm. So coherent skills which are incoherent skills which went uh in not sort of Tony who did to the Totrot Hagotan Totra Orange and Tony who did to Harrison of Tapaji Timon, the in not sort of mush Totra dead bottom eat it, uh, in their game, come game back in their game, Tatri Yadrota Gilly was their coherent light is built him in not sort of Totra do the focus. Fokus lah bottom jig atau jig jig yang dah utas tax. In kau hendak tu macam mana? Okay. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. And so monochromatic, that's the final one. So ordinary light, as you saw in the last diagram, it's composed of many different wavelengths, and that, and when it goes through a prism, it separates into different bands, um, and it's actually kind of backwards. Um, it's sort of so the light is actually coming in from the left of your screen and then going to the right and it separates. So laser light is composed of a single wavelength and because it, that allows for more specific tissue application. And so different tissues, whether it's a stone, whether it's prostate uh, or skin lesions that you may see, they have different sensitivities to particular wavelengths. And so utilizing the different wavelengths for specific clinical applications is taking advantage of the monochromatic property of lasers. So monochromatic is not just the other one, but the other one is the other thing. It 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 is the other thing. Байрлэн гэрлэн үлгэлээр маш олон түрлэн дэлгэнэй үхтэдаа гэрлүүдээс үүрдэдэг. Адээр энэ үлгэлээр нэг призмийг нэхтэлж архад өөр-өөр одаа гэрлэн харахад үлгэлээг гэрлэн оруулыг үүгдэг. Гөөр-өөр гэрлээр үлгэлээг. Monochromatic. Yes, it's a good thing. 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 Okay. 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 Okay.
I'll do Tina. Yeah, we. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Um, and so this is a basic uh, simplification of a diagram of a, of a laser, of what's required. So you have to have an original energy source, um, which in our case is just the electrical power source. And that's the medium that is stimulated to produce the photons. Then there needs to be an excitation source to provide the energy for stimulation. And then what's called a resonator system to produce the collimated beam of light. Mm -hmm. I know that there are other systems here to do duty. Once you do the decorator, then you could medium, uh, get you not share, uh, auto bitter spare, I just trump you the energy who support toxic hydronic is demand that are chicken excitation and source you cannot share to energy who sit on which trick who sit on it to chair at the Thomas Pratin at the excitation source of the demand that are chicken or share to one gilded who sit. Uh, resonator system, but in resonator system is like a fiber or something See, like that. The re resonator system is or that's fiber or like an. Uh, that's more the machine, like the, the oh, actual okay. body of the machine. Ah, okay. In that's resonator system, we're going to have a machine. A laser machine is going to be used to use the laser machine. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and this, this just talks about laser beam characteristics. Um, so the power density, that's the amount of energy that's actually delivered to the tissue. And that's determined by dividing energy in joules uh, by the square spot of a diameter. Mm -hmm. In other words, okay. so, the so the laser will have a very focal diameter, the actual focal diameter of the laser that beams on the tissue. So maximum power is actually delivered when the probe to target distance is identical to the focal laser length. And that's the characteristic that allows for optimal tissue ablation and minimal thermal damage. Uh, lasers can be delivered as pulsed or continuous. Um, in the okay. case of our neurology, it's generally pulsed. Okay. Uh, uh, Red Baha Targeting Zanis Targeting Zanj and the two focus chicken of the maximum power demon that are chicken of the edit of the Hamgim two to the Tulsi that that is mono or logos and doctor Hipston, Lazar and Hoy to do Shilter, Milton's and Purple, Nigan of the Post, which hosted the word Murray Jason better. Or logos and Purple Hipston, Hosted Chicken Bitter, Ido, Shilter of Chigido, Shilter Bora. Okay, go ahead. If we miss one. Okay. So th this is a very key. Uh, uh, aspect of urology lasers is different wavelengths can be uh, absorbed differently. It's called a coefficient of water, and that affects the depth of penetration. Holmium, which is the one that we both use and the one most commonly used in, in urology, it's highly absorbed by water, and that allows it to produce primarily surface effects without doing damage to surrounding tissues that you're not targeting. Um, and this is also what allows it to do cutting and vaporization. The holmium wavelength is uh, 20, 2,120 nanometers. Um, and so you can see uh, as the absorption on the log scale goes up, the more it's what allows it to do more tissue damage um, to or destruction, which is generally our purpose in urology, whether it's damage of stones or strictures or prostate. Mm -hmm. uh uh, wasn't uh, the absorption? Shingilting, 
нөлөөл хөрчин зүйл гнэ авсан. Одоо юу гэдэг лазер тэр лазер нотох дээр усан одоо шингээд дараагийн одоо ирүүл идэд а хэмтэл үүсгэх тийм нөхцөлийг ха бүрдүүлж өгдөг. За тэгээд тийм идэд гүний төлөг гүний гэмтүүдийг үүсгэхээр сэргийлдэг. За тэгээд усан хоол энэ хоолын лазер нотох дээр усан маш сайн шингэж сармагч өгдөг давуу тал та. За гадны за тэгээд зөвхөн гадаргуугийн гэмтлэг үүсгэх нөлөөнийг үзүүлдэг. За эсвэл тэгээд тайрах эсвэл уушуулах тийм нөлөөлөлийг давхар үзүүлдэг. За хоолын лазер нь бол тэгээд альгоны хүрт нь ашиглах. 2120 нанометрийн хэмжээтэй альгоны хүрт юм аа. It's going to get easier by the way. Okay? There there was the material. This is the more difficult material I think for everybody. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Next. Next, yes. So <clears throat> this is just a diagram uh showing a laser beam on tissue. Um and so the factors that uh, affect absorption are the power level, the temperature mm -hmm. of the irrigant tissue, the tissue composition, uh any kind of tissue cooling via blood flow or irrigant and then the speed or sweep time of the surgeon in other words how long the surgeon will keep the fiber on the particular target uh so mm -hmm. so we'll talk a little bit about this later whether on a stone whether you're kind of painting a stone or just targeting it kind of boring into it um and so just sort of a diagram showing that there can be scatter there can be absorption the different things that can happen to a beam there can be surface reflection which actually there's very little of with a homium laser because of that absorption of water that we talked about in the previous slide. Okay. За энэ дээр бол тэр лазерийн хэд үзүүлдэх а тулааны булан а гэрлийн гүний нэвтрэлтийг харуулсан зургууд харагдаж байна. Энэ бол тэр хүчний хэмжээний самараар бас ян зүр байдаг. За дээрээс нь а тухайн хэрэглэж байгаа эргээс угаалах хийж байгаа усны температур, эдийн температур, эдийн бүтц. За тэгээд а усны уусгалын нөлөөл зэрэгс ерөнхийдөө хамаарна. За лазерийн тухай эд дээр нэвтрээд гадаргуу дээр эргэж явах ойж болно. За эсвэл тэгээд дотоод сарилт буюу эдийн доторх сарилтыг үүсгэдэг. За тэгээд одоо бас нэг эдэд бас нэг шингэж болдог байна. За тэгээд зам тохиол лазерийн гэрэл нь цаашаагаар нэмэлт дээр дамжиж болдгоо гэсэн гэдэг зүйл харуулсан байна. За тэгээд энэ эдийн цаашаа нэвтрэхэд нэвтрэх тусам энэ лазерийн цацрагийн температур нь хэрхэн эдэд гүнд яаж нэвтрэж байна вэ гэдэг зүйлийг нь диаграммаар харуулсан байна. Окей, го ахад. So the laser energy in other words how the how do they have the energy creates tissue destruction. Uh a laser releases energy in a controlled fashion in this case in the case of a homium laser when you hit the foot pedal. It can be pulsed pulsed or continuous. Uh both are used in urology. Uh in general with stones it's pulsed energy. uh continuous energy is more seen with tissue destruction of of prostate uh there does have to be brief interruptions to allow cooling um there's mechanical separation as cap cavitation bubbles create fracturing of stones um there is evidence that we'll talk about a little later that the thermal damage can result in tissue damage uh damage uh so just some basic definitions to follow energy the total energy in joules is the watts times the seconds in other words time frequency which is another important setting on your laser that's the cycles per second of delivered energy that's expressed in hertz and then mm -hmm. the power which is expressed in watts it reflects how much energy is delivered and how fast and so watts is joules per <laughs> hertz so the, the 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 two big terms that you'll see on your on your laser that really matters is is joules which is the energy and the hertz which is the frequency and then mm -hmm. it's typically pretty important that what's the watts that often times you want to record the total energy used uh so in the in the in the slide there are the unit of energy of the laser um unit of energy of the laser harusan ba na ikut na the urgulchisan laser laser ahir dos na the pulse to chakhultat а лазерыг харуулсан байна. За баярлалаа хэн гэв. Аа. За эдгээр нэг аль альны нөхцөл дээр урлагийн салбарт илүүтэй хэрэгжүүлж байгаа. За баярлалаа. Аа. Хөлтөд лазерыг болохоор ихэвчлэн 
чулууг бодлох зорилгоор ихэвчлэн асуудлыг байх юм бол үргэлжлэн лазерыг лазер бол ихэвчлэн эдийг устгах буюу төрөө үлжирхэн хагалгаа за тэгээд юу нэ хавдрын хагалгаар бол бас энийг давхар хэрэгэл болно за лазер хоёр энэ тийм ээ тийм нэг үргэлжлэсэн нөгөө нийт энергийн төвшнийг бол аа бас тодорхойлж аа лазерийн юм дээр тохиргооны хэсэг дээр гарч ирнэ. Энэ нь болохоор ваттсар хэмжигдсэн секундын хэчнээ удаа аа хэчнээ энергийг зарцуулж ирнэ гэдэг зүйлээр хэмжигдэж байгаа. Дараагийнх нь болохоор давтамж буюу нэг энергийг өгөхөд хэчнээ давтамж аа хэмжигдэж байгаа энерги нь гэвтэй хэмжигдэж байгаа. Дараагийнх нь болохоор хүч гэж байгаа. За хэр хүч гэдэг нь болох хэрэг хэр хурдан хугацаанд хэр хурдан хугацаанд хичнээн их энергийг тухайн таргетанд өгч байна вэ гэдэг зүйлэг нь болох хэрэг хүч гэж нэрлэж байгаа. За эдгээр доор нь тэгээд ихэнх бүх төр хүч юм болох уу? А хэсгэн давтамжийг бол хөөсөлт томьёогийн доор гаргаж харуулж ирсэн байна. Окей. So just before we move to the next slide I want to just uh can you go back to I want to talk a little bit about that diagram. So what you the laser you have is that 100 watt that high power laser and yeah. essentially what that allowed the what what creates that is the fact that those lasers are allowed to are able to operate at very high frequencies and that's what you can see those spikes and this is exaggerated but those spikes with those periods of off that it can go up and down at high frequencies is what allows it to deliver so much power mm -hmm. and so you can see the diagram of the below where it's just a single pulse continuous wave that it can't deliver nearly as much power over time mm -hmm. За энэ дээр энэ зургийн дээр таяад харж ин за пальс нь бол хэрэг их хөвслөн маш богн хугацаанд маш их энергийг маш их хүчээр ерөөхдөө өгөөд өгөөд ирэх олон давтамжтайгаар энийг нь бол тэр зохиж байна. Харж байгаа за дараагийнх нь бол үргэлжлэсэн гэдэг нь бол тэр баг хүчээр а баг хүчээр их хэмжээний одоо энергийг зарцуулж хийгдлэг ажилбарыг бол тэр үргэлжлэсэн байдлаар ингээд энэ диаграмаас харж болно гэсэн. Yes. Is this uh can I ask a question? Is this the first laser you have or have you had an older generation laser? No, it's the first laser that we okay. have. So yeah, it's as if you got your first car and you got a Ferrari, huh? Yes, that's right. <laughs> All right, that's good. <laughs> Cuz it's a big difference. I've I've used even as uh, a few years ago we were using like the 20 watt laser and the amount of especially with stones you can take care of these big 2-3 cm stones with the high powered lasers that you could never have done with the older generation laser so oh, we really? yeah so we rarely do for instance because of these the laser that you have we rarely do pcnl uh -huh. because I they're see. just so much more efficient yes so you're you're very fortunate <laughs> it's good thank you yeah. so okay next um and so this is just shows the temperature effect of ablation so at at various temperatures so at 40 to 50 degrees um the physical effect on tissue is protein denaturation then you get protein coagulation then vaporization as the temperature goes up and that's where you start to see with prostate and then the carbonization and tissue vaporization that's more, again more with prostate and what you see then is the column to the right at the lower temperatures you really don't see anything so blanching that's might be what you see if you're if you're on a stone and then you might kind of see that change and some of the energy will scatter a little bit to the epithelium of the kidney and you might see that but whitening of the tissue the popcorning mm -hmm. of effect we'll talk about that that's where you'll see that oh, that's more of a stone effect and then the mm -hmm. bottom one the optical effect is that's more with prostate mm -hmm. okay <laughs> За жараас унд 40 градус бол тэр уургийн коглиацууд болох юм байна. За энэ нь бол тэр дүдэн тархах эффект нь бол тэр тухайн эдгээр цайвэрлэх, цай харагдах тийм өөрчлөлтүүд гардаж харагдана. За 100-аас 300 градус дээр тэр усны өөрчлөлтүүд би попкорн эффект энэ нь бол тэр их хэвчлэн бид нэр чулуун дээр хэрэглэдэг нөлөөлөлийг гэж харж болно. За дараачийнх нь бол тэр 300-аас 1000 градус бол тэр тарбинизейшн энэ эдийн эдийн өөрчлөлтийг бид нэр харж болох юм байна.
Next one. Okay. So th this is just a brief outline. We're going to start to get more clinical now. Um, the uses of laser in urology, there's stone lithotripsy, both in the upper tract and then also lower tract, so bladder stones. Um, in the prostate, well, you can use it's holmium and the KTP laser. Uh, you can use it for urothelial carcinoma. Strictures is a very common use. Uh, another use, you can ablate areas of radiation cystitis when there's bleeding. And then uh, some people, not holmium laser, but some people use lasers for certain skin growths and that can occur in the genital area. Mm -hmm. uh, Lazarusky <laughs> So this is the homium laser. I, I, is this the one you have? Is that uh, it looks like, but the, some of the details is a little bit different. Okay. Yeah. So uh, basically, so the holmium laser, that's, you know, really the most common laser we use in urology. As I said earlier, introduced in 1995. Um, I say until recently, it's the modality of choice because there's some emerging evidence of this new thulium laser um, mm -hmm. that's not in widespread use, even in the United States. Really, it's still, it's not even FDA approved yet. Um, mm -hmm. But main, so now we're basically using those high powered 100 watt lasers. That's most commonly what we're using in the United States. Uh, sometimes mm -hmm. we'll actually still, you know, if there's too many of us needing to do a case, we'll still use the old uh, 20 watt laser. And then the other mm -hmm. new technology that is associated with this 100 watt high powered laser is the Moses technology. And we'll talk about how that's been helpful. Um, and then the big thing, the homeum energy is, is strongly absorbed by water, as we showed earlier. And that's one of the things that really makes it ideal for use in urology. Homium can use, be used on all urinary stone composition, calcium, struvite, calcium phosphate, brushite, uh, cysteine, any stone. Um, so it's a very effective and safe for urinary stone lithotripsy. Mm-hmm. Хүртэлтэй <laughs> Lazarapratikashe <laughs> Урм бутлах хүчин чадалтай за кальцийн чулуунууд струватын чулуунууд за бусад төрлийн чулуунууд бүгдэнд нь бутлах бүгдийн дастаг ингээд илүү чухал нөлөөтэй байдаг аа Okay go ahead okay. So the mechanism of action of a homium laser um, there's what's called a photoacoustic or chemical effect and um, that's what that's one method we'll talk about the other in a minute but essentially what there's a rapid formation of a cavitation bubble that expands. And then when it collapses violently, that results in a shock wave and leads to fragmentation. The variation of uh, pulse duration uh, leads to different portions of bubble collapsing at different times. And that actually, actually allows you to give multiple shocks from the same bubble, but it's also the property that results in retropulsion. And retropulsion, we'll talk about later. That's the that's what can be a nuisance, and that's what the Moses effect eliminates or limits is the retropulsion. 
за энэ үндсэн механизм нь бол ерөнхийдөө гэрэл дууны болон химийн а эффект буюу нөлөөллийг энэ чулуун дээр үзүүлж байгаа. За нэгдүгээр нь болохоор rapid formation of the cavity bubble expand гэдэг нэг нь одоо а юу гэж хэлж байна та ача бодо. Бүмэдэг үү дээ. Тийм баа бид. A bubble expand is means like we make a small hole in into the uh, stone right? Essentially, yes. Yeah, mm-hmm. so the bubble expands and then actually when it collapses it collapses very violently, very rapidly and that collapse is actually what the loss of space it expands and then collapses and that's what leads to fragmentation. Ah, that's it. Bubble in a very hundi goose which are chosen hundi goose get or tagat irgish tatar at the other day that had in not a much digit 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 хавитэш нь хүндий үүсэх гэж нэрлэдэг юм байна. За эдгээр нь бол тэр гэрлийн чичрэгэлний хүчийг өгөөд жижиг жижиг хэсгүүдэд хуваадаг тэр үйлийг нь бол тэр бас тэгж нэрлэж байгаа юм байна л да. А за тэгэд цохилтын хугацаанаас хамаарад жижиг жижиг хүндийнүүд үүсдэг. Жижиг жижиг хүндийнүүд жижиг жижиг цаг хугацаанд өөрөөр цаг хугацаанд үүсдгээ, үүсч болно гэсэн байна. The multiple shops in this symbol. The often, uh, what does it mean the multiple shops uh, from the same bubble? What does it mean? So the, the, because of the where the wavelengths can be, the same bubble can actually, as it collapses, can result in different, it becomes so violent that it'll actually lead to multiple shocks and multiple fragmentations. Ah, there you go. Ад бол олон зохион тэнцэн маш олон жижиг жижиг хэтэрхийнүүд үүснэ гэдэг байна уу тамаа. Аа. Уни what's the retropulsion? The retropulsion is so when you're with a traditional laser when you're as you each time you strike the stone the stone moves and sometimes mm-hmm. the stone moves far and that can be very difficult especially if you're chasing a stone in a large mm-hmm. calyx. That's called retropulsion. Mm-hmm. And we'll talk about the, uh, and that's what this effect of the laser does. We'll talk about uh, that in a little bit. The Moses, that's the specific technology when you have the Moses setting on, that's what uh-huh. limits the retropulsion. And, and, and so instead of the stone going, you know, you're going boom, boom, it actually yeah, stays yeah. there. So that's yeah. kind of, so the retropulsion is a bad thing in urology. We don't like it. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's right. Uh, okay, I got it. Then retropulsion is not necessarily the choice of laser and the other of the dish or some shade with the urban shade with the best chosen dish or good 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 So that's a mm-hmm. direct absorption of the laser energy by the stone. And you can mm-hmm. kind of almost think of it as melting or vaporizing the stone. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so studies show that the more you can increase the temperature, the more you can fragment the stone. And so this is also a property of those high powered lasers like you have now. Mm-hmm. And so we'll talk about, I don't know if you've heard that term, the painting te- technique where you kind of brush along a stone. And mm-hmm. so when you're slowly vaporizing a stone and that's what that th- photothermal effect does. Um, um, and that's especially important with the 200 micron fiber where, because the energy density is very increased with the 200 micron fiber laser, that's the smaller fiber that we're more commonly using in our flexible scopes for kidney, when we're working in the kidney. Mm-hmm. Uh, зүлэ чи яригдэн за энэ нь болохоор яг үг гэхээр а тухайн чулуун дээр энэ лазерийн энерги очиж үүчлээ шингэж байгаа үзэгдлийг нь болохоор яг хэлж байгаа энд нь чулуу хайлж болох юм байна а эсвэл чулуу жижиг фрагмент жижиг хэтэрхийн нүдэд хуваагдаж болдог за судалгаанаас харахад болохоор а стон температур хэсэг тусам жижиг фрагмент үү хэсэг болж хуваагдах нь илүү нэмэгддэг гэсэн судалгааны үр дүн гарсан. За тэгээд дээрэс нь а чулууг бутлах техник гэж байдаг. Энэ нь болох дээрээ чулууг хайлуулах, уушуулах техникийг болох дээрээ а зэрэг нэрлэдэг гэсэн юм. За тэгээд одоо бидний чулууг бутлах техникийг ихэвчлэн бид нар 200 микрон хэмжээтэй 
fiber-ig ashgaltig in bid nar odo oyn durun shil bir oyn durun bilgi a durun taagar ikhmsten bürn der ashgaltig in baga gisni bürn shil bakhar ashgaltig baga okay let's go yes next okay um so this is the technique we're talking about retropulsion so it, it depends on the laser fiber diameter uh the pulse width of the generation of the energy and the energy output so you minimize strong shock so you, the, it's that photoacoustic effect which is the first effect we were talking about with those cavitation bubbles that causes the retropulsion and so the idea is to you want to limit that as much as possible and these newer higher powered lasers like the moses like the one you have have the ability to do that okay the retropulsion is the Юута ихэвчлэн холбоотойгоор үүсдэггүй гэх юм бол лазерын одоо фиберийн хэмжээ хэмжээ диаметр за тэгээд а тохиолтын өргөн за тэгээд дээрэс нь энергийн гаралтаас ерөөдөө ихэвчлэн үүсдэг за тэгээд долгионы хүчийг нь аль болох багс багсгаж а фотоакустик эффектийг илүү ашигласнаар ретропошн үүсгээ сэргийлж чадна so the most Moses high powered laser, this is what you have. Um, and it does so by modulating the pulses. So the optical energy of the laser is basically what it does. It splits it into two pulses and it somehow creates a, it creates a vapor channel with the initial pulse. And then that allows the second, that, with, that allows the second pulse to travel through it. And it's optimized to deliver the radiation of over a one to two millimeter distance while preserving the energy to the stone surface. And okay. so as a result, the Moses distance mode, I don't know if you've seen that, you know, that's a, option on your thing that's ideal for popcorning technique where you're just leaving the laser in space and allowing the stones to strike it and in the, when you're using the distance the fiber tip actually doesn't need to be in contact with the stone surface to do destruction it's theorized that the pulse modulation improves efficacy by delivering more photons through the initial vapor channel so therefore more energy and these higher frequency settings produce fewer large fragments and that's the goal. If you can produce fewer large fragments, meaning two millimeters or greater, that means less passes up with the basket, and that improves your efficiency of your ureteroscopy. And under which it doesn't know that the most it is with the manaki, a Hana Frat de Bara has the head, and even that's a hit with coin. That is it, in a very gilding, tattering, uh, twisting, gilding, which it hoiled his. Болон optimize okay just wait uh, uh i'm just uh, confused that uh, optimize it uh, to optimize it to deliver rotation over one to two millimeter what does it mean i couldn't get it uh which part the two millimeters are great with, with uh... yeah yeah so that's sort of the two millimeters is sort of arbitrary uh in that any fragments less than two millimeters are thought that they'll be they'll just pass easily after the case so in other words if you can frag and then we'll talk we'll, if you can fragment the stone into pieces that are less than two millimeters those are pieces that will allow to be passed that you don't necessarily have to bask and so this type of energy with the, the that works allows it optimizes that and so if you can reduce that, that, you know, that's a time consuming. Every time you go up with the basket and take a little fragment, you know, that mm -hmm. takes several seconds. And so if you can 
eliminate larger fragments, those are ones that, that, that increases the efficiency of your, of your case. Uh, yeah, the university is a church which is a church which is a church which is a church which most distance mode for popcorn taking distance to total water, Gigi 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 Тэгтээ чулуун дээр лазерхан файбрыг байрлуулж аж тохиол илүү үрдүүлдэг байлгаа гэж байна. Яс. Яс. Um so this is uh these are said these are just pictures uh, of, you, of you, you can see of the this hopefully looks a little bit familiar to you on the left. Um and so one of the techniques is the pop dust or popcorning. So once you you know, initially start with uh, reducing the size of the stone. And once you end up with smaller fragments that you want to get to like one or two millimeters, you can use this pop dusting technique. And so you have the right and the left pedal. So the right you could set at the, the that's the, the, that's what's in red. That's the uh, energy of 0.5 and that high frequency of 80 with the short pulses. And then the, and that's more the pop dusting where it's not actually coming in contact with the stone. And then the Moses distance, sorry, the Moses distance is that 0.3, so a little bit lower energy, a little bit higher frequency, and that's the, the popcorning. Mm -hmm. so these are just some settings uh, to keep in mind for that. Uh, distance Okay, go ahead. Next. So just one more thing, go, go back, Katie. So I think one nice, one important thing about this laser is, is you, you'll often read about what the ideal setting is and whether you should be popcorning or dusting. And the nice thing is, is you can have two simultaneous settings. And so I'll very mm -hmm. frequently switch back and forth between my right pedal and my left pedal. So I'll do a little mm -hmm. bit of, of the distance and then the popcorning and just kind of, and it's just very easy to go back and forth. And that's one of the nice advantages of the particular laser. Mm -hmm. Okay, next. Okay. Um, and so this is the short, so this is a short pulse versus Moses distance. And this is, these are again, different settings. Um, the short pulse results in more direct strikes. The Moses distance, uh, it's a higher ratio of indirect strikes to total strike rate, strike rate, sorry. Um, and so the laser fiber to the stone distance is less important when you're using that Moses distance popcorning because they're indirect strikes. It's just the lay the stone literally popping into the laser fiber. And so that gives you more uh, that, that energy delivery at a distance. So you don't actually need to even be on the stone. You can just basically leave your laser right in the middle of that calyx, fi fire the pedal, and you'll just see the lay the stones will just basically essentially swirl around at the, uh, at the laser fiber. And again, the combination of modalities, that's what I was talking about last minute. It's very easy to use both, where you can switch between the short pulse for direct strikes 
and then back to the Moses distance for the popcorning for the indirect strikes. And in general, it allows you to use less power and therefore less heat generation. And we'll talk a little bit later about how there is some theory that now that heat generation can cause some damage to renal, um, to re to renal cells. And again, that same principle of less fragments, less than two millimeters. And it's also thought that it can improve visualization in the Moses distance move, mode. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, short pulse of Moses distance. Uh, all was a sort of the instrument. A short pulse mode to the red book. One, um, Lazarin's Hushin Hushin short shot on the Rochich. No, Lulu, I'm Moses distant the short post better. That's Hushin Hushin under the Tom Stara short or stuck. And Kirsten need to Hushin Hushin or Stere was under a garter. Moses distant popcorn taking care of the Chodo bosom fibre horns that teach for the top is your glass. Moses distance there of the one uh Totterhot said in the ring, which she was there, a cruel stew chapter at our tasta. That is it. That is it. Uh, Hoy, uh, don't know what I'm talking about. Hoy, I would talk to you out as the hoiling and half throat combination. He gave you out as the or dogs. That it is in a city, which pack, which you part as to the Aderison, a halstic bag was a great out as the that did the hoil mismitunis hoil mismitris, chicken him jet tiger, uh, Visualization will be bit near to the total horns that burn heart. Hark, what am I going to do with our task? Okay. So, again, this whole concept of uh, popcorning, which is the non contact lithotripsy, where and that's uh, where you're not actually having the fiber directly on the stone. Um, and essentially it's the chaotic and noisy movie of move, movement of fragments. And that's why they call it popcorning. If you've ever seen popcorn being made out of a traditional machine, it's just sort of going all over the place. Basically you keep the fiber tip a few millimeters away from the stone within the calyx um, and then fire the pedal with intermittent bursts. It's, it's important because of the energy and the heat generation that you take a little bit of time, probably every 15 seconds go about five seconds off. And essentially what happens is the stone disintegration happens as fragments move around and come into contact with the laser tip. Um, and those higher pulse frequencies that the Moses one that you have allows, allows for higher power. And then it allows, it it's, ideally works better when performed um, in a smaller space, a smaller calyx, as opposed to a dilated renal pelvis. So, mm -hmm. Sometimes I'll move a stone if a stone is sitting in the pelvis when I know I'm going to want to do this. So you can actually basket the stone and then drop it off into a calyx, and that'll make that easier for you as you advance in the case. Mm -hmm. Then, uh, non contact literature popcorn in case it is with him. I know the city Yamata was a take him for Chotonic scooting, Hutuni, Chotonic scooting, Тэгээд а чулуунаас тэдэр тодорхой хэмжээний төв миллиметрийн зайтайгаар файбрыг байрлуулдаг. За тэгээд баг автомжтой баг тасралттай лазерийн хүчийг ашигладаг. За тэгээд энэ нь болохоор ямар давуу талд байх юм бол чулууг тодорхой зайнаас лазерийн хүчийг чулуунд өгөөд нөгөө чулуунд буцаад нөгөө байрандаа эргүүлж авчирдаг тийм давуу талтай. Other in the Rundur, uh, Tafchum Taftamsta, if who chit, who chit to Gora, in the adult chicken ostion in the Yog, uh, taking the castle of the two wood to take some chicken, but if she did by a chicken shot on a tick, in Taftamja, if she didn't bought the little Hutsunto, sat of chat bed to just chicken iron, Chotova, Dormer or Orbal Jarach Charat, in the castle of the two wood to take bed drags. Okay, next.
So this is a free, you may read in different papers, the, co the controversy dusting versus fragmenting. And you'll sometimes at the end, even been at the AUA, they'll have these debates of what's best to do. Um, kind of bottom line up front, you can do both within the same case. So it's not like you really have to make a choice. I'll frequently do a combination of dusting and fragmenting where I'll fragment, I may take a few pieces and then kind of dust the remaining. Um, basically, stone-free rates are similar. Fragmenting does require basket stone extraction. Fragmentation also results in more operative time because each time you have to go up and basket a stone, then bring it out of the scope, drop it off, advance the basket back up. Um, there's a higher risk of ureteral stone retropulsion from the higher energy with fragmenting. Um, there's also theoretically a higher risk of damage uh, when you to the mucosa when you're using the higher energy of fragmenting. There is an advantage with harder stone like calcium oxalate monohydrate and brushite with fragmenting, uh, but the choice really it, uh, it's surgeon preference and experience. And as I said at the start at the beginning of the slide, you can change the settings easily. Uh, so you can have essentially a, a dusting setting on your right pedal and a fragmenting stone on your left pedal and just go back and forth. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Ostrich of Dog, that the shade were in Choso, Undru Negger Toxin to Hot, Osa Desha Gooch or Kutu, the Hundusut, Undrakis Tibet, that the Chesney Zaming, Mokosin Kinslik, was his personal Undru Nerte, uh, Lazar Shelter, Nergo Nergat Lazar Shelter at Hot, uh, Chesney Zaming, Sasting Kinslik was his to Undru and Ah. Тэгээ зарим хатуу чулуунуудыг утхад бас жижиг жижиг хэсэг болгоод татаж авахад илүү дандаа гэтээ энэ бол тэр зөвхөн мэсэлжийн аль нь илүүдүүд зөв аль нь туршлагаас хүн шалтгаална гэж байна. За тэгээд лазер а тэгээд энэ хоёрыг бол тэр хавсарч бас давхар хэрэглэж болно. том чулуун жижиг фрагмент болгочоо дахиад нөгөө жижиг фрагментаар жижиг галтын хэд байдаг. Хоёр талын хам педалд нь дэр тохиро тохироог нь хийчихэд ашиглаад явах бүрэн боломжтой гэж байна. Окей, next. Go ahead. Okay. So, uh, just specifically on dusting, this is where you're using your higher frequency low energy settings, so usually kind of either uh, energy of 0.2 or 0.3 and um, and a frequency of about 80. Of our, as far as that's your hertz. Um, mm -hmm. It's ideal for small ureteral stones because there's less retropulsion. And then mm -hmm. when you're narrow space in the ureter, it also avoids that kind of the damage to the mucosa. Um, mm -hmm. Ideal for softer stones like struvite and uric acid. Uh, the one disadvantage of stud dusting is that you generally don't get a specimen, but as I said, there's no reason why you can't use a combination, get a fragment, basket if you really want specimen and then dust the rest of it. And that's, that's pretty frequently how I'll go about it. Um, but uses the other advantage to dusting is it uses less energy and that means less fiber degradation. So, you know, if you are doing a two, three centimeter stone, you can sometimes go through multiple la laser fibers for one case. And so the dusting settings will allow you to preserve your fiber. Um, and then again, with that Moses setting, especially less retropulsion means more efficiency and that Less operative time, so you can get more done in a quicker amount of time. The dusting he could talk to you, uh, fifty three or shot out of the other kind of there. Under the stump stop back in there is a structure, so so me millimeter tunis back him just the bottle of the chicken bottle for what in the water. I know the fifty hot children, children, Adiris and Sustin in Tick, Pospa, who sent the Tawatata, 
за жижиг одоо зүүрийн чулуу бол аструвайс болон юрик асидын чулуунууд нь бол тэр илүү тохиромжтой. За тэгээд нэг сул тал нэг юм бол энэ чулууны даалтын бүү жижигэн бүр жижигэн болох хэтэрхий болгоцоор цороо болгоч байгаа учраас ямар нэг эдний за чулууны хэтэрхийнээс авч гаргаж ирэх боломжгүй байдаг дагуу тал та. За тэгээд баг энерги зарцуулж за нөгөө нэг лазерийн файберыг удаан хугацаанд ашиглах боломжийг олгодог. За тэгээд дэшээгээ чулуу дэшээ гүх эсэл баг та илүү үр дүнтэй нисцэсийн хугацаа богнохон байдаг байгаа бас техник үед. За зарим тохиолдолд бол тэр термал буюу одоо дулааны юм нөлөөлүүдийг бас үзүүлэх боломжтой байдаг. Одоо үгүй удаан хугацаагаар үргэлжлүүлсэн тохиолд дулааны нөлөөлүүдийг үүсгэх боломжтой байдаг. Энийг тэгтээ толгойд үргэлж санжаах хэрэгтэй шүү. Okay next. Um so there's a you basically have the two phases the contact phase where you're painting the stone um and then a non-contact phase that's the popcorning. The initial phase is where you're debulking the stone and you're kind of sculpting it along that direct contact you sort of some people refer to it as painting, brushing and th that's the debulking phase and ideally you want to keep the stone as a single entity as long as possible because uh, once you start getting the smaller stones then it's hard to keep the laser or fiber on top of it so that's just a strategy of uh, to think sometimes that going slowly to keep the stone in a in a single entity will actually save you time in the long run and then the second phase is that popcorning which we talked about earlier that non-contact lithotripsy another advantage to dusting uh, some people argue is that you don't need an access sheath because you're not basketing and you're not having multiple passes up um, most people argue that an access sheath has other advantages besides just basketing and that you're it allows for more irrigation and continuous irrigation to reduce the thermal effects of of the lasering as well mm -hmm. yeah, dusting he gets одоо сухаан чулуунда фибер хүрэгдэх болон хүрэгдэх гэсэн хоёр техник байдаг гэж юм. За хүрэгдэх нь бол тэр одоо тухайн чулууг одоо лазер бодох тэр техникээр нэг юм гарч ирээд байна л та. Бодох, бодох, бодох брашинг одоо пейнтинг гэх бодох техникээр нэг юм гарч ирээд байгаа байхгүй. Тийм бас нэг зүйл байдаг. За тэгтээ За тэгтээ энэ нь бүтээр юу гэдэг нь чухан чулуун том хэмжээтэй байгаад энийг нь одоо олон жижиг хэсэг тууахгүйгээр нэг бүхэл байлгаж байгаа жижигийн дастын хийгээд авах зарим тохиолд илүү давуу талыг бас олгодог. А эсвэл бүр жижигэн чулуун дээр одоо бас их давуу талта одоо шууд дастын хийх шууд одоо нүцэнд тоослоо давуу талаа тоослоо бол илүү давуу талта байдаг. За тэгээд Then зарим инженерийн хооронд одоо санал зөрүүлэлт хийж байдаг. Access sheet-ийг хэрэглэх нь зүг буруу гэсэн аа зүйлийг бол бас маргаантай байдаг. Чи зарим нь болох тэр access sheet-ийг хэрэглэснээр одоо тухайн thermal effect үе дулааны effect тухайн EDC-д үүсэх нөлөөлөлөөс сэргийлэх ач холбогдолтой. Аа зарим нь болох тэр access sheet энэ жижигэн чулуунууд дээр хэрэглээд ах шаардлага байхгүй just a little bit of shard of quake. Okay, next. So they, we're going to go through the basically the four general techniques. Um, in a way, this is out of order because we've talked about this a little bit, but just four general techniques. Uh, one is painting, and that's good for softer stones. Basically, you're pace, placing the fiber in direct contact with the stone and you're brushing back and forth layer by layer, taking a little bit at a time. And initially it can seem time consuming uh, because you're going slowly, but in the end it really does save time because if you can have uh, less fragments that are three or four millimeters that you either have to basket or then reduce in size, it ultimately saves you time. So chipping, this is a technique best for hard stones. So cysteine or calcium oxalate monohydrate and you're basically placing the fiber in contact with the edge of the stone and then you're kind of holding the stone steady so you may have it pinned um, against the back of the calyx and then you do that until small fragments chip off. 
за бид нар бол их одоо энэ чулуу бутлах нэг дөрөв техник байгаа. За эхний тег нь бол их энэ тентинг гэдэг техник юм байна. Энэ нь бол их илүү тийм зөөлөн чулуунд илүү тохирсон. За энэ шууд файбри үзүүр яг чулуун дээр наад байрлуулж байгаа ерөнхийдөө чулуу бутлаг. За тэр нь нөгөө брашинг одоо нөгөө бодох гэдэг байхгүй. Багсаар бодох дээш доош. За юу дээш доош ийм байдлаас чулууг цохино гэсэн үг. Is this right? Is like a brushing is like a painting like this way? Mhm. That's right. Okay. Yeah. Чулуун дээр тайлбарлах жерээс доош уусаа би гурсаа урдаас болж байдлаар ингээд чулууг ингээд жижиг жижиг ластаа хийж ирдэг. Энэ бол тэр ямар давуу тал та юм бэ? Аа тухайн чулууны үе үеэр чулууг хуваах юм давуу тал та. За дараачих нь бол тэр чипинг гэж байна. Энэ хэрэгч та хатуу чулуунд илүү одоо хэрэгэлдэг техник. Энийг нь бол тэр шовиомынхаа ирмэг дээр байрлуулж байгаа файбрыг байрлуулж байгаа лазерара бурхдаг. За энэ бол тэр тэгээд тодорхой жижиг хэсгүүд дээр ингээд а маш тийм юугаар стеди гэдэг нь тийм зүлгүүхэн аж ахуйнаар одоо ингээд яг цод удаан хугацаагаар барьж нэг хэсэг дээр удаан хугацаагаар барьж байгаа гэдэг нь бол чипинг бизнесээ таамна окей so popcorning we've uh, already talked quite a bit of this uh but you know so often times after you fragment a, a large stone there'll be a group of 3 or 4 mm fragments that would either have to be basketed um or the, otherwise they won't pass and so this is that non-contact lithotripsy where the fiber is near the stone but not in contact and you deliver intermittent bursts because it's high energy and can cause thermal damage and basically it causes movements of the stone and fine fragmentation okay. do you want to do that uh, yes uh the чулууг 3 4 мл болгоод хуваага жижиг жижиг хэсэг болгож хуваагаад за тэрнийхээ дараа заавал ургуулж авдаг тийм нэг энийг хийхэд бол чулуунда файбер лазерын файбер хүргэхгүйгээр а одоо тасалт олон удаа тасалт тохиолд хийжээж өндөр хүчээр тасалт тохиолд хийжээж энэ чулууг бодлоо хийх нэг байгаа за энэ нь болохоор яа юу гэдэг нэг сул тал нэг юм бол чулуун хөдлөгдөх хөдлөгдөх за тэгээд жижигэн чуулууг өөр шилж одоо юу гэдэг ретро фашн дээр болоход төлөөлдөг юм бол тал та. Окей. Окей, so fragmenting this would be either a single stone or maybe a small stone or a, or a fragment you basically uh, have the fiber in contact with the stone and pin it against the urethelium. Uh, if it's in the ureter that's a little easier or oftentimes a calyx you'll pin the fiber you know literally mechanically physically against that and you're essentially boring a hole into the stone until the stone just fragments and splits. Um the one thing to take care of is you, know, you don't kind of often know when you're through the stone and then you can very easily damage the urethelium as the laser goes through the stone and into the fire into the urethelium. Аа дараа чинь бол фрагментинг гэдэг нэг юм байна. Энэ бол хэрэг жижигхэн хөнжилтэй нэг чулуун дээр хөдлөлдөг техникээ. Энд бол хэрэг чулуун дээр файбер заавал контакт болгоод хүрэлцүүлээд байрлуулах нь байна. За тэгээд аль болох үзүүрийн чулууныхаа үзүүрийг аа одоо шийлгүүрийн хамнаас ч юм уу эсрэг талд нь гаргуул заавал байрлуулах хэрэгтэй. Тэгээд тэгж байна. Аа тэгээд зөвхөн нэг цэг дээр батлж байгаа чулууныхаа зөвхөн нэг цэг дээр л тохиолт хийх юм. Зөвхөн нэг цэг дээр only one point hitting right. Target is only one point. Yes, there is no other points. Okay. А зөвхөн нэг цэг дээр тохиолт хийх юм бол тэг арга юм бол фрагментинг гэдэг арга юм байна. За тэгээд энэ үед бол ихээр салс гэмтэх хэрэгтэй байдлыг хүлж байгаа. Салстыг чулуу бутлаж байгаа шигээ зээс гэмтэж утахгүй шүү гэдэг зүйл санаалж хэлсэн байна. Okay next. Uh and then so these are some various settings. This is a good slide to keep in mind uh for what you would use. So for fragmentation uh high energy low frequency and you can see so you have like 0.8 uh joules and then a pretty low frequency like 8 hertz and this is classically what we used to do with the low powered laser before we got the high powered laser the dusting is the lower energy 0.2 to 0.4 with 50 to 80 hertz popcorning is uh, you know, high is kind of a combination and then the pop dusting is that like half joule to 80 so so oftentimes I'll start out with that like you know with a setting of like 0.2 and 80 and to debulk the stone and then at the end I'll switch to that I don't usually go as high as 0.5 but I'll go about 0.4 and 80 
to get that popcorning, pop busting effect. Mm-hmm. In study, a little bit the boot had a lot of support to the coin of the last new foot bottom, which need to run with the Harrison. Does any Yamara Arcad with Yamara with Yamara 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 who chased the whole with the Harrison? Many who thought it looks another only name is another name which is good to look at the fact that after some bad that a combination of the fact that it would be to look at the fact that and I'm just, just going to briefly talk about the thulium laser just so you're aware of it. Um, it's a just a, it works at a slightly lower wavelength, and I guess that gives it a, a better absorption of a higher water coefficient. One of the advantages is it actually has a, it can use 150 micron laser as opposed to the 200, and that allows better irrigation and also flexion of your ureteroscope, especially if you're in a lower pole calyx. Uh, it's thought to work faster. It's thought to have fewer fragments greater than a millimeter. Another advantage is it can use just a standard 120 power volt outlet. Uh, the Holmium high powered lasers tend to use, they require um, special outlets. And then uh, they're, they tend to be less noisy, uh, highly absorbed in water. Um, but the disadvantage right now, there's not much in the way of clinical data. So, um, Basically, in trials at academic centers at this point in the United States. Okay. Have you ever done any consulting that in that job? Me, it was <laughs> difficult to change it. I know there are other clinic practice related to go back to some. Ah, also the two things are that the shingitic team tower tasta that the digic energy to who digicing or that digicing at the area work in chat touch or too much more. Yes, Safety, we'll talk about, spend some time talking about that. You're interested in that. Um, so anything part of a safety program, you wanna know who's responsible, who is on the team, identify the hazards, have an education and training plan. You wanna know what standards apply in the particular environment and you're operating. Are there local, national or international standards? Uh, credentialing required for both surgeons and support staff. What room are you going to place the laser in as far as, you know, access and power requirements? And so are there modifications required? And then you want to know what instrumentation and accessories you need and then documentation tools. So. Okay. I will do program. I will do a question. 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 I am a question. Sort of a stick yard to the home of the Dunut back and the Amor is back to the Timjin Dago in a little programming bit and if truth story with the Julius Hours to Ankarsha that in general, Mr. Sutton was a dimch has been edged in his head. Yamor dimch has been edged in the head story. The article Yamor Urut has a lottery mistake, lottery mistake, George Urut's room, uh, Totoro, Mr. Urut, how гэж байгаа юу? За ямар ямар тоног төхөөрөмж нэмэлтүүд шаардлагатай байдаг вэ? Эдгээрийг яаж баталгаажуулж болж авах гэдгийг тон хэрэгслүүд байна уу гэдэг зүйл заавал тодорхойлох хэрэгтэй байна. Okay, next. so as far as safety program, you want to have a written system for documentation of identification of hazards, evaluation, prevention, and control. It's important with a, with a laser have commitment from your leadership and administration. You want employee involvement. In other words, not just the surgeons, but support staff, ongoing education and training, and then periodic worksite analysis. Science mm-hmm. safety program, not the book to the repetition, canoe, the attitude, unison, or sensitivism, the attitude. I will ask, I will take down to the team, 
зүйл үнцэн бүгд бүгд програм байх хэвээр за тэгээд энэ удирдлагуудын төвшөнд даавуучгүй зөвшөөрөгдсөн байх хэвээр ямар ямар ажилчд энэ хамрагд төсөлтөөн ажлын байрны сургалтууд болон боловсролыг яаж авах хэвээр энэ за тэгээд ажлын байрны дээр одоо аудит шалгалтыг яаж хийх хэвээр энэ гэдэгүүдийг даавуучгүй төсөлсөн байх хэвээр гэж Yes So international standards there's an organization called the International Electrotechnical Technical Commission uh they provide guidance and standards for laser safety and program management there's a specific document that you can reference 60825 on the safety of laser products um it's also important to know if there are federal and local standards for your particular environment uh these requirements that that govern both facility requirements PPE which is personal protective equipment like eye eye protection ongoing education and training policies service and maintenance За энэ олон улсын бас энэ лазер технологи ашиглаж байгаа ашигладаг ашиглаж хэрэглэдэг стандартууд гэж байдаг юм байна. Энд дээр нь болохоор олон улсын электротехникийн хороо гэж байдаг юм байна. За энэ хороо нь хороо нь болохоор ямар үйл ажиллагаа бол зөвхөн бол лазерийн аюулгүй ажиллагаа бол програм менежментийг зохицуулсан тийм үйлдэмжүүдийг гаргадаг үйлдэмж стандартуудыг гаргаж хангаж ажилладаг. За энэ документ нь болохоор 6825 гэсэн а дугаартай документ байна. Энэ бол тэр лазерийн аюулгүй байдлын талаар танилцуулсан. За. Тэгэл за за зарим тохиолдолд бол тэр тухайн засгийн газар тухайн орон нутгийг хариуцсан засгийн газрууд нь тухайн сургалт за дөрөмж урам үйлчилгээ тэр харгуулсан өдөрдөмж юунуудыг заавалчгүй шаардлага гэсэн. Төлөмжүүдийг заавалчгүй шаардлага гэсэн. Okay, next. So adverse events, okay? Uh there can be adverse events to the surgeon, to the patient, operating room personnel and then even your equipment. Mhm. Mm А дээрээс нь мэсэлсэл хийхэд зориулсан хоног төхөөрөмж зөрүүнд төлөөлөгдөг үүдэл бий. Okay, next. Uh so different hazards so there's hazards that are directly from the beam uh from the laser itself that can be eye damage, skin damage or even electric shock and then there are non-beam hazards so inherent to the actual generator the laser machine. There can be device device failure, fire, smoke, there can be infection transmission. and then there can be electrical damage and even gases from the uh tissue destruction. За энэ гарч болох аюулууд нь бол тэр засгийн шалтгаантай болон нон засгийн засгийн бос шалтгаантай гэсэн хоёр үзэн бүлэг хөдөлгөөт юм байна. За засгийн шалтгаантай нь бол тэр хөдний гэмтлүүд, арьсны гэмтлүүд, арьс төлөгдөл зэрэг гэмт. За тэгээ дээрээс нь цахилгаан цохиул зэрэг гэмтлүүд үүсдэг юм байна. За засгийн бос шалтгаант нь бол тэр за тухайн багш дөрөв төхөөрөмд ажилгүй байх гал гарах за уртаа өнөөр үүсэл халдварын тамц дамжих зам болдог за дээрэс нь цахилгааны болон хийн а харалтаа аюулыг учруулах боломжтой байна okay next so there's different mechanisms of hazard control there's administration administrative rather so that's the infrastructure safety program documents available for education and policy and then ongoing education engineering this refers to the safety features of the manufacturer meaning the device so in your case luminous and then there's procedural controls this is what your safety program does to implement safety measures за энэ аюулгүй хэрэгшээ нь бол нэгдүгээр өдөрлөгийн багийн талаасад аюулгүй ажиллагааны дүрм зургийг заавалгүй баталж гаргаж өгсөн байх шаардлагатай бол за тэгээд эмэл чаарлагтай документ мэдээлүүдийг хангах за дөрөм журмаар хангах за боловсрол сургалтыг зөвхөн байгуулсан байх шаардлагатай за инженерийн талаас бол тон үйлдвэрлсэн бүтээгт хүний аюулгүй байдлыг бүрэн бүтэн байдлыг бүрэн хангах юм зорилттай за ажилбарын талаас бол тэр ажилбарын аюулгүй ажиллагааны хэмжүүрүүдийг төрлөж өгсөн байх шаардлагатай юм байна гэж yes next and menu So examples of administration 
So you should identify a laser safety officer. This is the person who's in charge of your program. Uh, some hospitals have an actual safety committee. And then you have your policy oh, documents. Uh, you want to have the logs and operative notes. Uh, and then periodically, you want to do audit reports where you interview staff members, inspect the equipment, and observe procedures. And then education, training, and reporting. Yes. So engineering, so examples of this are, you know, your uh, a covered foot switch. So the switch, it's not just an open pedal. You notice the foot switch is covered and that's a safety measure. Uh, audible indicators when your laser is firing, tip, firing typically the there's a it'll make a noise that way you know it's firing okay so there's no inadvertent if you hit the pedal by mistake you'll hear a noise and that'll alert you key locks all lasers have your keys locked so it's not inadvertently used uh, you have your standby control so when you're say when you're ready to basket you put the laser on standby and then all lasers have an emergency stop. And then another example of is actually the service manual is considered an engineering uh, um, control. Engineering class was the South Hudson Okay, next. Go ahead. Okay. So procedural controls, these are things you safety measures are put in place. So you'll want to have controlled access to the operating room. So typically you'll put a sign out like you see the one on the on to the right of the slide where you that's usually on the window of the operating room somewhere on the door where it says laser in use and you want to limit the amount of people coming in and out of your operating room. Um, typically you'll also place appropriate eyewear next to the sign. So some people you'll actually see goggles or whatever is hanging from the sign. So people know that if they come into the room, there's goggles available that they can put on before they walk in the room. So non-flammable window barriers, eye protection, both for patient and staff. Doors should be closed, but never locked. And then the key control, the key should be controlled by the laser safety officer, but the, and you should never leave the key, what, key in the device, in the la actual laser console when it's not in use. And then you wanna have fire extinguishers readily available. Mm -hmm. За Control. He did safety manager to Mutinza of Hatrajasta. He was not his duty to ask her to read the region. That is a Kalontra or a Mash Urhumbach's soft hat that was he was with Mash Urhumbach's to shoot. Okay, next. 
So this is just a safety checklist. This is that this is what the operating room nurse will go through before every case. And this is printed out. So the so proper eyewear for a patient, uh, eyewear for staff, warning signs, eyewear available in the suite, a smoke evacuator or inline filter, laser surgical mask available to staff outside the suite, a fire extinguisher, surgical prep, uh, skin should be thoroughly dry before laser use, uh, laser plug to proper outlet, laser foot pedal switch away from mainstream of the foot traffic, and the laser time fiber hand piece is documented. So this is just a checklist. Uh, this is like at our hospital, this is on a piece of paper that the nurse goes through to make sure before every case. Okay. The Lazarin. <laughs> Mistily, I will go to me, not to say what I look sharp. That put Pitadi was clear, also who she do her to cut her leg of her who back sharp stuff. That is Lazar Ashkasson Go ahead. Excellent. Okay, so uh, finally, last phase is complications. Uh, so the first one is uh, mucosal damage or perforation. Typical depth of thermal injury is about half a millimeter, so very not very not very deep. Uh, so you can either get small mucosal defects or perforations. Sometimes these perforations, if you get the right spot, can result in very bothersome bleeding. Um, one way to limit mucosal injury, you want to have good communication with your anesthesia provider so they can limit the depth and frequency of breath, especially when you're lasering in the kidney. That's not as important when you're in the ureter because the stone, the ureter is not moving around. But when you're lasering in the kidney, if the, if the patient is taking deep breaths, the, those big movements can be very dramatic than what you see on the screen. So it's important if you tell, I'll always, sometimes it depends on the anesthetist. I'll always tell the anesthetist if the patient's moving around too much that they need to get the breaths under control. So, uh, so, cause otherwise there's too much movement. If there's a ureteral perforation, just typically leave a stent for four to six weeks. Um, if there's a perforation in the, in the renal epithelium, there's really no need to do anything. If they're self-limited, they'll heal. Uh, the biggest issue is sometimes they'll get bleeding. Um, I've never had this happen, but there are rare reports of renal bleeding from a mucosal injury that can require embolization. Mm -hmm. uh, the Dain has that of the engineer to Sassi was was bottom stab at it. Saturday, a lot of other things like a sculpture with a totally empty in Humusing and Sardin, a coon, Sam Sardin, Tatums, Saturday, the gig, I got up by her, Tatu Often we do hear him about the photo, a positive nick in the hundreds day. Doctor Eric, uh, I have a question about uh, 
all the patients should be having the general anesthesia or just the, like the spinal anesthesia? Uh, at our hospital, we use uh, general anesthesia. In rare cases mm -hmm. where they can't tolerate it, maybe for a distal stone, uh, those mm -hmm. patients can be done under a spinal. Uh, uh -huh. But in general, they'll use a general anesthesia. Uh, it doesn't necessarily require intubation. They'll most usually use a laryngeal mask airway, an LMA, but they'll mm -hmm. be under, under general. Mm -hmm. uh, in some cases, I'll have anesthesiologists ask me, though, do we want the patient paralyzed? Because uh -huh. that does sometimes, that can sometimes help the limited movement if, it, if the stone is in the kidney. Mm, okay. That's right. Here in Mongolia, we mostly perform uh, with the spinal anesthesia yeah. for the patients. Yeah. But uh, I think uh, now we need to change uh, the anesthesia into the general one while we are, while we, we while we will use uh, the laser technology, right? I think for intrarenal stones, yes. For ureteral stones, I don't think it's as important. Okay. Because okay. ureteral stones, you don't get nearly as much movement. So if the patient will lie still, and uh, where I've done most of my workshops in Uganda, that's mostly, what, they don't have much stones, but I'm, I'm used to them doing cases under spinal anesthesia, which we wouldn't do in the United States, but the patient and the staff is comfortable with it. I do think mm -hmm. for, uh, you know, for intrarenal stones, where that movement, that little bit of movement can make a big difference. It can be very dramatic. Uh, mm -hmm. intraoperatively and that's where you can be lasering and then all of a sudden the patient breathes the kidney moves yes. and then your fiber goes right into the epithelium and then you can get bleeding yes that's right and that uh, it here we will be shared with torsen by a week not there uh of talks about aesthetic tyrex and throws to run that on the aesthetic previous one please Yes, thank you. Ah, here we have the born German Nigim, who's singing the Jews Chagat Hot German Nigim Badger. Um, Yum Hartlerbach or Silk Limited to Uru Hitler that Is it right? So, am I understand? Uh, for is there any like a mucosal injury in the root kidney? We don't need to have any, any extra procedure. No need. No, they'll resolve. The, the bleeding, they may bleed a little bit more, but uh, they'll resolve on their own. You don't need to leave the stent any longer than you would, uh, you know, three, I usually leave a stent for three days. Some people uh -huh. do five uh, for, for an uncomplicated case. Uh, uh -huh. But if it's a, yeah, an injury in the kidney, you don't need to do anything additional. Okay. Okay. So just some, you know, some general principles in avoiding mucosal injury. We'd already talked about the anesthesia. Vision is obviously critical. And so you want to maintain a clear field. And the best way to do that is with uh, irrigation. Okay. And then, so this device, I'm not sure if you've seen this uh, picture on the right. This is what I use. It's called a single action pump. Um, mm -hmm. And basically it's a hand irrigation piece. And so some mm -hmm. people use a pressure bag. I don't yes. like that. The, the single action pump your assistant uses. Um, and basically they can irrigate as briskly as they want or as gently as they want, which is nice. And so mm -hmm. just something to keep in mind, keeping a clear field. I'll let you translate mm -hmm. that and then I'll continue. Ah. Some cousins has thinking who's singing you to check out the whole does her talpa and you put my same bell. I will be all you in whom body of the or in Karasha Karsha or of spirit in her talpa who's hit the other of the massage had like the kitchen. Ted, uh, who is hard that holds it all. I just break short in terms of such was not. Okay, go ahead. So, and just a couple of other points. You know, if you're doing a large stone and you start to lose visualization, either because a combination of stone fragments or bleeding, then it's okay. Mm -hmm. No one to terminate. You end the procedure and it's better to come back another day. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then and the we'll... other thing. Okay. Uh, I just put here, Jeff, after the short one, the heat home back, Tako Tanya, uh, I read the salt that I just bring the socks to this and that's our ass, but I should tell them to so what? Taragin, Stin Tavet, Taragin, Hagalani, or Tatiri, what Puna for the stock. Okay, go ahead. 
And then the last point on this slide is just the access sheets. And that'll allow you to irrigate um, a little bit more efficiently because the irrigation will actually go around the access mm -hmm. sheet and avoid that high pressure in the kidney. Okay. The access sheet, the water of the issue, access and work to the bed. There are two access sheet types in the bed. Oval like much more than he got her heart and back her heart to give you hot. Yama sheet is an access sheet, the one of sheet green, neutral sheet, the one of the oil drug. The rig type to the two to the bed car. Oval like heart and money of the sample. Okay, next. Um, so just other considerations, lasers can damage basket or wire. So just be careful of that. Um, lasers can, can damage your lens. So you wanna make sure the laser fibers advance at least two millimeters beyond. So if the laser is too close, you can actually get cracking or damage of your lens. Um, one thing to be careful of is as you're, if you're on a big stone and using the laser, the laser tip can actually break. Um, and then sometimes the coating on the laser will actually fray off as there's degradation and that can come off. And then sometimes you have to basket that, which is very tedious. Um, mm -hmm. This is not, this is something I just learned while preparing this. I guess if you have a large uric acid stone, it can result in cyanide toxicity from the photothermal breakdown. Um, mm -hmm. I guess it's uh, highly soluble in water and then it can be absorbed in traumatized tissue. I don't know if you have many uh, uric acid stones in Mongolia. Uh, we don't have that many, but it just, I thought it was interesting. <laughs> yes, that's right. Taragin got the Kundu the Hokta a last rascal chef of Tornera Bitrukin takes a wire gim take the Kundu carpet, the Hatigat, Taos, Torongasa, Tazin fibrin with the Torongasa, Hoyl Millimeter Tunis, Post Pazar Church Bitter, a Jibra Hikor, Torongisa Lindsay Gim take his step, that there is no better Lazarin fiber man or over his state, there is no garden talking for who has had that a traduce to the state. Thirty hold with the three thousand Are you talking about the photothermal breakdown produced the cyanide now? Yeah, say that again. Uh, are you now? Are you going to keep uh, talking no. uh, photothermal breakdown? No, that's all I'll say. That's okay. I don't think it's very important. It just yeah. thought it was interesting. <laughs> mm -hmm. We can go to okay. the next slide. Yeah, go ahead. So thermal injury. Um, this is kind of something that's being more recognized with the high powered lasers that we're now using like you have. Um, mm -hmm. This continuing lasers does result in heating of tissue um, and even the irrigant very quickly, which is I think one of the nice advantages of that single action pump because you're quickly circulating new cooler irrigant. And um, in bench models, temperature will seem to reach 70 degrees Celsius after 60 seconds of lasering at 40 Watts. When that, and that is pretty high power. So continuous irrigation is important for preventing thermal injury. Uh, mm -hmm. There can even be post-operative ureteral stricture or even inclusion. Mm -hmm. Then there's potential for intrarenal cytotoxic effect with prolonged high-powered lithotripsy. Mm -hmm. I've heard some people say that if you're using high-powered lithotripsy, especially in the kidney, you should limit it to less than an hour. And then it's also advised to do intermittent laser activation where you may fire for the pedal and then leave off for five seconds to allow cooling and irrigation. Um, access sheath can help. Um, and many people will argue that you need to do a post-operative ultrasound at six weeks to rule out uh, ureteral occlusion uh, from thermal injury. In continuous Hasting was a bit dying with no much congenial water irrigation towers to his heart. The Tatangrats who some which are sequent in the Ra Nigminot, I still teach Taragin. 
taraging uh, I mean, uh, the Eric and I couldn't get the uh, the second sentence of the presentation. Temperature Temper and bench models, that one. Yeah. So that just see so in bench models, meaning like in 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 the lab uh, where they've done it. Uh, so the, in the lab, so in other words, they'll fire the laser in the laboratory, and they were able to see that just after 60 seconds a minute uh, at the 40 watt, they were able to create temperatures of uh, 70 degrees Celsius. So that's uh, a, in vitro, not, not in a live patient. Uh, okay, I got it. So I don't know if you want to watch the last year or just continue to start a school where I still had a tongue of chin of the tongue 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 of Аль болгоод үргэлжлүүлэн удаан хугацаанд аль болгоод хэрэгтэй стэсийг шаардлагатай. За тэгээд а шэл бүрийн нарийсэл халгааны дараа шэл бүрийн нарийсэл болон бүгдрэл үүсэх хэрэгтүүд байдаг. За тэгээд За тэгээд үгдийн шэл бүрт байх юм бол энийг бол нэг цагаас илүү хугацаагаар хэрэглэх хэрэггүй шүү. Энийг бол нэг цагаас баг хугацаанд л ялаад нэг хэрэглэх шэл бүрт бол хэрэглэх шаардлагатай. За тэгээд дундуур нь болох тасалцлаагаар хэрэглэж бол болно. За тэгээд access sheet-ийг ашигласнаар энэ бол тэр маш сайн угаалаг болон хөргөлтийн систем болж өгдөг. За тэрвэ шаардлагатай тохиол 6 7 хоногийн дараагаар заавалчгүй шийд витамин шинжилгээг шийд бүрийг шалах шаардлагатай. Okay, go ahead. Okay, oh, that's it. That's the end. Yeah, did I get that so word right? <laughs> yes, that's Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much, Dr. Richter. So do you guys have any questions? I know it's been a lot, that was a lot, so <laughs> I hope it wasn't too. Uh, let me ask from our participants. Okay, uh, from the Professor Bayon, he has two questions. The first, then, who is setting up the laser machine before uh, preparation? Preparation is like an engineer doing these things, or uh, the surgeons or the medical staff, other staffs doing these things. The, the, uh, the operating room nurse. Yes, operating room. Uh -huh. Mr. Slim's whole thing is that the whole thing is that the whole thing is program the whole thing is that the whole thing is that the program thing is that the whole 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 thing is that the in your in your presentation, there you have mentioned about uh, the safety program. Uh, we actually currently we don't have any safety program uh, in our hospital. And if you have any like an, uh, any uh, safety rules in your hospital, if it's possible, could you send us the sample of this? Yeah, I could, safety rule? I, I could send you uh, like at least like the like, sort I could send you the checklist, and I can send you I can find. I can see if I can find the manual that we use. Thank you. And I can see if I can download that and get that sent to you. Yeah. My name is Tigat Yurukito. Today we're going to talk about the general and general control of the hospital. Oh, today we're going to talk about the general control of the hospital. Oh, today we're going to talk about the We have a lot of things to do for uh, initiating the laser machine. Before we just make sure uh, make a, a good environment for the, the patients and the, uh, the medical staffs. Yeah, that's, that's it, 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 well. It takes a team. So yes, that's why. Yeah. It's really <laughs> If they like an there is like an interoperation. If there is like an interoperation injury in urethra and there is occluded or structured, what are we going to do? Plastic surgery or 
uh, oh, so for a occluded ureter. Um, yeah. So some, sometimes if it's just a short segment, you can do balloon dilation. If it's a complete occlusion, uh, you know, then it depends, you treat it like any ureteral injury. It depends where it is. If it's, you know, very mm -hmm. distal, you can do a re-implant. If it's uh, kind of mid to distal, you have to do a bore, some type of borari flap. Uh, and otherwise, anything more proximal, then you need to think about some kind of substitution. Mm. <laughs> those, by the way, and to be honest with you, I think those are very rare. I think it's just important to keep them in mind, though, as you're using the high-powered lasers. In general, mm -hmm. when you're doing, you know, prolonged the stones in the ureter you're typically lasering especially with these lasers for maybe you know no more than 20 minutes of actual lasering so i, I don't think i think the risk is low but it's just something to keep in mind in general your prolonged lasering is going to be in the kidney because mm -hmm. um, that's where you're going to have your larger stones and that's and probably the consideration there to think about is just your know, renal injury so um, just make sure you're irrigating, make sure you, I think that's the advantage of the access sheets. If you have uh, those available, um, they're, they can, they can help, but they're not, they're not essential. Um, and then if not, just, you know, limiting the size as your experience grows, you'll become faster and more efficient. Um, but then, you know, limiting to stones that you can probably get done in an hour is probably ideal an hour of lasering. Okay, we got it. Ирэхэд а тэр шиг шийтгэг бас тэгж таарулж хэрэгэлдгүү эсвэл зүгээр яг стандарт нэг хэмжээгээр явдгүй Okay here is the one question from the doctor Jeffa and he asked that about the access sheet um, should we uh, need to calculate the, the height of the patient with the uh, the access sheet size no do you no, have, we, well, I guess the question, do you have access to intraoperative fluoroscopy? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So you can just watch the sheath go up. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. So they're pretty standard. Yeah, I've seen in the past, they've had like male ones and female ones, but in general, you can just watch it go up to where you estimate where you want it to uh, be. Okay, x -ray. So you can have either a retrograde to see where the kidney is and then just follow it mm -hmm. up. So, you know, because that can, you're right, that can be dangerous where in a short patient, in theory, you can put the access sheet through. Yeah, so as long right. as you're there, they tend to, that's as long as you're watching it go up, you should be safe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So I usually have a, so I'll usually have a, when I'm using an access sheath, I'll usually have two wires. One is a uh -huh. safety wire. And so that also uh -huh. shows me where my kidney is because I'm following along. And then uh -huh. the access wire that I put it over. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Uh, the one wire is an out of the access sheet, one is inside of the access sheet, right? So the wire, yeah, so one is inside the access sheet, and then once uh -huh. you get the access sheet in over the wire, you remove the wire, and then you advance your scope up the access sheet. Ah, uh, yeah, that's right. And in general, I'll only use an access sheet for, for a flexible scope when I'm in the kidney. I won't use mm -hmm. an access sheath if I'm using, if I'm in the ureter with a semi-rigid. Mm-hmm. 
шийдвэр аксес шийдэн дотор явж байгаа вайга дурангой хоросныхаа дараа ерөөхдөө бүрэн авч болно гэдэг юм чинь. За өшөө асуулт байна уу? Би нэг юм асуулт хай. За. На fiber биш тэ. Одоо За тэр fiberыг үзүүрийн хэсгийг нь зүгээр ердөө хайчаар хайчихж болохгүй гэдэг. Аа. Okay, there is a fiber and the fiber tip is must be uh, uncoated, right? Dr. Eric? Yeah. Uh, it should be uncoated, right? Can we, yeah, can so, we just... Yeah, you can some, so yeah, you'll sometimes see that degradation where the fiber tip will go down to the coat. Yeah. Um, some places will have actually a, a little device that you can actually take the coat off so you can get more uh-huh. out of the fiber. Uh-huh. Um, and, and I think that's very reasonable. At our hospital, they don't let us do that. Um, but if they want to spend the money, that's not my issue, you know, but that's, that's the rule they put in place. So I'll sometimes use three fibers for a single case. Uh, uh-huh. I don't know how realistic that is for you. I think it's very reasonable. There are these devices that you can basically put over the fiber as your teeth yeah, gets down to kind of strip it off. Yeah. But uh, and my, my, our, one of my colleagues asking, can we use a scissor for? Yeah, I've off? even used, I, I've used, sometimes there's been a time, I, I've been in a case where we ran out of the 200 micron fibers and I've even taken like a little, like an 11 blade scalpel and kind of chipped it off. Oh, yeah, okay. it's kind of been used. Oh, I should have to use. Bueno, any more questions? The assault on Bachbot Bosso Hobby names. And no, 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 uh, our uh, the scrub nurse is asking, uh, should we give the fibers to the sterilization unit or we just wipe it out with the spirit or something else? Uh, that's, you know, so, you know, th- this is some of the challenges that um, that you face that I don't. We don't reuse the fibers, but I think you can, they can be sterilized. I I've, I've have been in places in the United States where they will sterilize them. I think it's reasonable to use the same kind of precaution. How do you sterilize your scopes? Uh, the it, EO, EO, ethylene oxide. Yeah, so I think you could do the same thing with your fibers. Ah, uh, okay. Ethylene oxide is the hydrogen to the bottom, right? Sorry, Dr. That's it. That's it. Okay, everything is clear. So I'm sure I saw that now. I named him that to talk. That a good auto, a sort of hotel, uh, in the a meted lagosun, a lexon song, Eric Richard talked to the wife. Now we don't have any questions, and thank you for uh giving us the great informative uh, lectures. It's thank been you. great honor from our department. За тэгээд энд англи хэл дээр яваад дээр нь орчуулгын явахаар ингээ нэлээд урт хугацааны хоёр цагийн лекц болж байна. За бид бол дараа ийм одоо лекц авах болох юм бол өрсөлдсөн байдлаар Монгол хэл дээр орчуулчихад одоо энэ лекц өгөх хугацааг бол хамаагүй богсохноо гэж бодож байна. And it's been taking the two hours uh, uh, the lectures with the translation maybe next time uh, we will translate all of the slides in Mongolian and make it be shorter if you will take another lecture from you. Uh, it was fine. It makes it easy. It allows me to rest in between. So don't worry. Bit of the Gorum Sari Umnos in Lexic or Chugoches, Hans Tepsumbara. They got the end, much middle state Lexic Bitner Toro Chuklo. It then go Lazarin Aprat, Hirgitch Ked, Yunkito, Book Mirgistin, I took middle state Bachelor of Tabjara. Thank you, Katie, for the advanced supports, and we are uh, demanded for 
uh, having a lecture from three months ago, and it's been a, a great work and great. Ah, so I should you say. Yeah, it's was him told him he And also, we would we would like to uh, set a one goal in our laser technology. Uh, we are trying to uh, educate the, all the people in uh, same level, same standard. Uh -huh. uh, we have a, uh, another, I hope we, we hope we have another chance to have an, uh, the online lecture one more, uh, several more times in the future. That's it. Our first, uh, the online lecture is finished successfully. We are so thankful for everyone who participating in our lecture. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you okay. so much. Thank you. Yeah, it was, a, it was a true honor. I enjoyed meeting you and getting to participate in your uh, education. So thank you for inviting me and, and I hope to meet again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I still have the list of lectures you were interested in so we can get more of those scheduled. Yeah, for sure, Kathy. Yeah. We would love to have it. Yeah, thank you so much for coordinating. Uh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, thank you for coordinating. In two days, uh, we're going to celebrate the Lunar New Year in Mongolia and Happy Lunar New Year. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> Happy Lunar New Year. <laughs> thank you so much. Okay, thank you. Uh, it's the end of our lecture. If you have any, any comments for us, you feel free to tell us. And I'll try and get that document from our hospital so I can send it to you. Okay, thank you. Thank Edmas. you. The safety document, yeah. Thank you so much, Dr. Richter, for presenting. Thank you, Katie, for organizing. I appreciate it. Couldn't have done that. Thank you for bailing me out and sharing the slides. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. I think it's too late in the stage, right? It's, it's time to have it sleep, you. Yeah, yeah. It's about 11, about 11 o'clock, so. <laughs> yeah, that's right. They're not as late as on the, like in New York, it's one o'clock. So we're uh, in the mountain time zone. Oh, I see. That's so not quite as bad. <laughs> it's actually probably, it's actually pretty good time. Yeah, so it worked out well. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. Meet thing. Mm -hmm. That was an extra. So, that's uh, okay, can we finish it? it? Okay, let's finish uh, the meeting. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, hope you will soon. Okay, thank you. Happy Lunar New Year. Yeah. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye.